Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be experiencing on all of uh, Korea, both north and south, in this lovely uh, TF-104 Starfighter. I was going to do the F-35, but I said, eh, you know, let's do something a little different. I've already got the EPU all plugged into here. I've uh, gone ahead and I've filled this thing up with about as much gas as I can carry. This is not going to be enough for a flight. We're actually going to have to stop along the way to kind of get a little bit more gas so we can uh, kind of continue our flight, but I'm not too, too worried about it. If you're joining us today, we are on the East USA server. If I pop up here, East USA, and just make sure all players are enabled and it shouldn't give you too uh, much trouble as far as that goes. So let's go ahead and uh, click on the EPU here. And they're going to go fire up that big old engine uh, chilling inside this little magic green box. Um, we have no manual starter. As a matter of fact, if you actually look around the inside of this plane, one thing I'm always tickled with, there's no button for battery because we don't have one. <laughs> I think we basically have an emergency backup kind of battery. But even that, like I said, there's no switch for it. I have a generator switch if I need it. But like I said, it's just it's a, just a different way of looking at things. So super easy to start. And I'm going to stop talking because the sound effects in this thing are pretty sweet. And it looks like we got a pretty good layout right there. That's not too bad. Not too bad at all. So that's all set. Now we'll go ahead and I'll start getting the rest of our systems going and we'll get going with our flight here. Uh, one of the great things here is uh, Lafarog was nice enough to provide us with some information for our, our INS here that we can utilize if you are doing this. This was up on our community page if you're interested. I just saved it as default, which I know is a naughty thing to do, but oh well, what are you going to do? So I'm going to go ahead and get that sort of uh, the whole process of alignment getting going here. It doesn't take very long to do. Active waypoint two, please. I don't need anything else. Let's go ahead and flip on attack cam. We're not going to need it. Go ahead and pop on our IFS system. Well, I'm probably not going to need that either. We also have our radio on this side. We're going to also get the radar starting to get warmed up here. Like I said, we're not going to be doing too, too much of that. All right, with that all going, I'm going to go here. I'll get more than enough. I'm going to take the EPU away. I'm going to kind of do my little salute and say thanks a bunch, guys. You were very, very helpful with uh, getting me nice and started today. We'll get some gas on the way, like I said, because we're simply going to run out. <laughs> Just kind of one of those things that happens. Clunk. Oh, man, imagine if that landed on your fingers. Oh, boy. Let's make sure oxygen's on. Normal pressure suit. Might as well flip that on. We'll get some lights going, too. For those of you who'd like to follow us today, I'll put those on steady, nice and bright. Make it a little bit easier. I don't need that. Interior flood uh, console light. I'm not going to mess with that too much. Turn on the little flashy light in the back as well so people can see us. Man, this thing's loud. Sweet. Virtual navigation fault. Not for long. And we're good to go. Last thing I need to do is just select my inertial navigation system. That looks good. It looks like we're 63 nautical miles away, and we're heading down at 210 for an, our initial one. Good afternoon. All right. Another thing I love about this aircraft is there's absolutely no parking brake. Like, if I press the parking brake button, nothing actually happens, which I think is kind of amusing. You have regular brakes, and we also have a drag shoe, which I might get the kick out of. But like I said, nothing too, too excessive on this one. I believe this is also an F-104. I think this is Laffa Rog. For some reason, it's not showing the title bar as a top across the top. I didn't change that setting, so I don't know why it would or would not. But hey, it's, it's flight sim. What do you expect? All right, we're going to need one click of flaps for takeoff here. And I'll kind of gently uh, kind of nuzzle up, up to my little end of the runway here, and we'll kind of get going. Oh man, this thing is such a treat. And I'll tell you a little bit about my experiences with this plane in the real world. Not that I've flown it in the real world, but uh, you'll know what I mean once we kind of get there. All right, come swinging around. This thing is so tiny. Ooh, monkey chicken, uh, F-15E, F-18E. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna be able to keep up with this thing, but you can certainly try. Approach is clear. Give it a couple gas here. Oh, this thing sounds so angry. All right, let's head this way and kind of swing this way. Oh, we already got somebody on the uh, runway here. Luckily for us, though, um, this is the new Air Force aircraft where they can take off at the same time thanks to improved phasing technologies. All right, so let's go give the controls a quick little windshield wiper, make sure they're behaving. That looks pretty good, looks pretty good. Give them a wiggle. Everybody's moving okay out back. All right, pretty sweet, pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Hopefully the person in the back seat doesn't mind all this kind of goofiness here. All right, landing lights coming on. Uh, Anti-skids coming on real quick, just in case I need to stand on the brakes. Uh, I'm going to put tip tanks on, so when this needle starts dropping, it means I'm actually burning real fuel here. And let's go. Oh, no. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Off we go. Look at the airspeed indicator. 150, 160. You have about 10 seconds to learn how to fly this airplane as soon as you get airborne. 
Oh, yeah. That is so sweet. And I just violated the 250 knots under 10,000 feet rule there, but you can't help it, this planet, I swear. I'd throttle back to about 90% here, and now uh, we'll make my initial turn, and we'll start heading towards the south. Man, that thing is a trip. Uh, for those of you who have this aircraft, if you have not tried it in VR, you're doing yourself a disservice. It is ridiculous. Uh, somehow I've fallen out of my seat here. Maybe I forgot to buckle up or something like that. There we go. A little bit more to the left here. Like I said, I'll give everybody just a tiny bit of time to kind of get caught up. Notice there's no AOA indexer in this one. We do have this little meter here. It's equivalent angle of attack. It's not really angle of attack. It's actually a combination. I think it was called the APC, if I recall correctly. All right, I'll slow down a little bit to let those uh, poor F-18 folks uh, kind of catch up with us. They're going to be a little bit of a disadvantage here. Well... They think they're going to be at an advantage here. You see what I say, but can't see anyone. Uh, Aiden, uh, I'm not on the newest build of Flight Sim. My best bet is that you're just going to have to resynchronize a little later on. If you kind of want to meet us somewhere, you can go to Zulu Kilo Sierra Delta, which is Sondok Airport. It's kind of on the way, and uh, you can try to, like, come at us. Uh, we're roughly on, uh, let's see here, whatever the opposite of 220 heading is. Uh, good day, G. ICAL code. ICAL code here for USAPR. We are at Zulu Kilo Kilo Papa. And we'll go ahead and type that into the chat real quick. All right, so experiences with the F-104. The F-104 is one of my favorite... Oh, hang on a second. The F-18s catch up? Ah, they're catching up. I'll, I'll hit it in a second. So for me, the F-104 is probably one of my favorite aircraft of all time because it's just stupid. Like, I don't know. There's so many choices in this aircraft that are like, all right, so we just need to go as fast as we can. We don't care about anything else. Okay. Uh, there's a really, really good internet meme with this airplane where you have, you know, like an F-4 doing its little turn with smoke turned on. Then you have an F-16 turning inside of it and then they just draw a straight line to show you uh, the uh, turning radius of this aircraft it's uh, pretty quickly yeah that must be what it is yeah it's a beta issue but at some point i'll probably join the new beta i'm i'm, I'm patient because i know that it does have some performance issues that could impact things like videos and stuff like that but on um, this aircraft it's just fast and one of the things i always loved about it, it was actually my first payware airplane ever in x-plane like i never ever could imagine playing for an actual airplane until i've encountered this thing and i watched the guy's video and it did the whole startup and everything and i'm like yep that's the one and um also at our air museum that i used to work at for oh, 10 years amazing but uh, when we used to do there they had this aircraft and it was not a tf-104 it was an f-104 i think it was in i want to call it a d but the incredible thing was is just climbing into that plane i mean here it looks like i have plenty of room you like get lowered into it like you need a crane to get into this airplane it's just so 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 incredibly tight it's it's amazing and like this little radar between your leg like you don't really see it popping out at you and it usually has like a little kind of a hood right here and everything like that and one of my favorite things too is you got this light right here which we'll play with uh, on our way to Poyang Yang which is just I don't know it's just so cool um for those of you who are Falcon fans uh, if you did the little mod where you could fly any airplanes you could actually fly this one around granted it had an F-16 cockpit and a Garbo radar but it was always super duper fun to do intercepts at like you know Mach one and a quarter you know one and a half because that's what it was designed to do now the cool thing with this plane too, which I think is really, really... Oh, Lafferog caught up. I think it's time at the gas. Roosevelt's just... He's struggling, man. Come on, Roosevelt. You'll catch up. Uh, the interesting one is uh, with this aircraft, they used it for the purposes of delivering nuclear weapons, and I'll show you why. Let's go ahead and push that throttle all the way forward. Let's give it a moment. And I'll go ahead and unload it. Just like this. And that's got us doing point nine on the deck here. Keep in mind, I'm carrying a full four fuel tanks on this thing so unfortunately that's going to be chewing through my fuel pretty quick and that's going to be point Mach 0.9 and i should be able to get theoretically i can get this thing a little over Mach 1.2 at this altitude so what you would do is you'd attach a little nuclear weapon to the bottom of this thing you go really really low and then at the, um, you actually had a timer and it would sit right here these are dual timers and what you do is you set one for the climb and one for the approach you cross over a waypoint on the ground Activate the first timer, and when that timer beeped, you'd pull three Gs until the second timer beeped, and then you'd press the nuclear bomb release button, and you'd basically do it vertically. So on um, this little bomb that you drop off, keep in mind you're this low, you can't, it's very hard to hit something going this fast at this, I am doing Mach 1, by the way. 
So you'd be cruising along like this, you know, you suddenly pop up, release the nuclear weapon, flip upside down, and then run for your life at like Mach 1.5, just trying to desperately get out of the way before, you know, the nuclear weapon, which you suspended from a parachute, would actually kind of like slowly descend. But I mean, just like, look at how fast this, I'm not in time acceleration. This thing is literally going for this fast. And this was from 1957. Oh, it's, that, that's pretty terrifying. The other problem that's terrifying is if you look down at my fuel gauge, I've already burnt through my pylon tanks. I mean, that's literally how fast that would go. Yep, Mach 1 on the nose here. No, sorry for the F-18 folks. They will be should be able to keep track of me here, but um, still, it's going to be pretty low going here. We actually do have a terrain-following radar in this one, but um, it only works in parts of Europe, so unfortunately, uh, I can't show that off. Kind of a bummer. Not terrain-following radar. It should be its ground mapping radar. It is always super-duper fun to play with. Yeah, I'm doing a good 620 knots here. It seems like a pretty safe speed to be tearing across the treetops. Of course, the other one to do this one, since we're in North Korea here today, would definitely have been the MiG-21. But I um, do not, did not pick up the MiG-21 for flight sim. I was reading it needs a little bit more work, so I'll definitely check it out at some point in the future. Oh man, this thing is so stupid fast. I'm actually going to throttle back here before I run out of gas. Now, one of the fun things is you can try to dogfight with this thing, but it's like, I don't know, it's like dogfighting with a B-17. It just does not work. You get some pretty fun scissors if you have something like another one of these and you can dogfight with it, but your dogfight lasts two minutes because you're out of fuel, like, just like that. Actually, look down, check this out. I've completely burnt my pylon tanks, and I'm already that far into my tip tanks. And that was, what, a minute and a half? It's just, it, it's tough on that. But it's the early days, it's the early days. Imagine if you put another engine on this thing. All right, so we're coming up on our first destination here. This is going to be uh, Hamhung, which is uh, one of the large ports up in North Korea. We're going to be ripping over the top of Yanpo Air Base, and we're kind of swing by uh, Sandok Airport. Again, this is all in the North Korean side of things. Uh, Falcon fans are immediately going to recognize this particular region. The only difference today is we don't have to worry about SA-2s being launched up at us, which is kind of nice. But uh, we do need to watch out for this kind of low-altitude action here. Ooh, that looks dangerous. Oh, yeah, this will be fun. Just imagine the guy's just looking out his window and all of a sudden this happens. <laughs> if he doesn't spit his coffee or throw his coffee cup, I, I, I'd be disappointed. Especially with the, uh, whoa, I got passed by an F-18. Oh, it's on. Let's go. So the joke, okay, what's he going to do? All right. I'll load a little bit here. I'll... Right, let's come to the left. All right, I'll give him a little bit of a lag pursuit here and just building up a little bit of energy. All right, he's just going to power past me. He's got about mm, 0.2 more. No, nah, he's gone. Oh, Roosevelt, you're a little too fast for me. Is he... Oh, he's going to do a loop, isn't he? Pull the throttle back. Right underneath him. Back to a lag pursuit. And we'll stay right out of his field of view by going real low here like this goes there's the vertical wait on the vertical though now we pull it and we're gonna come right over ah! <laughs> <Woo> <laughs> and that's a spin love it <laughs> sorry that was an aside completely unnecessary but incredibly fun yeah oops somebody's coming up behind me now well, this is unnecessary, but I don't care. <laughs> the guy in my back seat is probably chundering all over the back of my chair here. <laughs> that is super fun. All right, so there is our first position. It looks like an F-16 is launching there. Uh, F-16, by the way, stands for Fokker Model 1-6. I don't know, just a pretty big airliner there. And I'm probably out of gas. Eh, getting low, getting low. All right, so now let's take advantage of the speed this thing has. I'm going to go ahead and kind of make my way towards Poing Yang Yang now. We'll pop on to the next waypoint. And that should update automatically, which it did. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to take advantage of the climb rate on this thing. Unfortunately, like I said, I think we're going to have to stop for some gas real fast because I really have very, very little left. So I'm going to pull the throttle back. All right, this would have been nice about the F-35. All right, let's get some gas. Uh, refuel switch open. Click. Let's go ahead and open up uh, the Texaco station. And we're all set. Plunk. 
Ah, that in-flight refueling is a great trick. All right, let's get going. Ooh, we got a Tomcat up there. Tomcat, I, I can't light a candle to that thing. I might be able to surprise it with like a hit and run, but I'm certainly not gonna be able to do much more than that. All right, so we're gonna do a zoomy zoom climb here. So I'm gonna build up enough speed. I just wanna get just about Mach 1 here. And we're gonna pop up to about 36,000 feet. That's Mach 0.98. All right, let's go. We're gonna pull two Gs. And just hold the two Gs until you get up to about 30 degrees. Actually, you could probably do it at 45 and then do an unload, but we'll see what happens. There we go, it's 30. 40. Five. Going up. We're gonna do is we're gonna start nosing over and you want to be real careful that you don't get negative g's on the nose over otherwise your engine cuts out so we'll do about half a g here and it's about 0.25 i don't need to do it too much and it should get to about 20 30 degrees here we don't want to lose too much of the mock which we've lost quite a bit you can see i'm already down to like 250 knots of course my engine just cut out probably not a good sign and i gotta unflame out the engine here there we go all fixed. And that got us about 16, 17,000. <laughs> Man, that's a pretty... Oh, we got an F-22 now. Oh, that's not fair. All right. I think our engine's back up to normal. All right, let's take a look real fast out the back. Yeah, it's working again. Good. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to pop over to Pyongyang, which is the uh, uh, capital of North Korea. What I find interesting is my INS is ever so slightly off right now. Like, not bad, but just a tiny bit. And I just find that kind of interesting how they uh, kind of model some of those details. And that puts us about 0.9 right there. I'm going to lift the nose up just a little bit. Like I said, we want to go up to about 36,000. I'll show you one of my favorite things about the F-104. Now, speaking of Falcon, uh, when I was first playing Falcon, the first Falcon I played as in, you know, Allied Forest and BMS, for those who are familiar with it, was actually Falcon 3 back in the 90s. And uh, of course, that was super fun because they didn't have a joystick, so you had to use the arrow keys in order to control an F-16 accurately. And uh, one of the most fun things with that, of course, was in the early days, a lot of things were for DOS and not for Windows. So what we'd have to do uh, when we're setting those games up is we'd essentially have to design a boot disk, which when you started the computer, you had the boot disk in the, you know, the floppy disk drive. And what it would do is it would like arrange the XMS and all the different types of memory types so that you'd have the proper amount of basically swap so you could actually play the game itself. Keep in mind in those days you had eight megabytes of, man, of RAM, for example. You know, the concept of a gigabyte of RAM is it just wasn't a thing in my early days of gaming kind of a thing. But it was still like one of those things. And of course what would happen is you'd need like 460 kilobits of XMS and you had 459 or something like that and the game wouldn't even open it wouldn't even give you the time of day it was just it was just different back then as far as the way a lot of that stuff goes but it was always amusing and I remember playing that game and what you do is you take the squadron of pilots and you'd name them all after like you know your heroes or you do like actors or actresses or something like that it's all the different people in your squadron and then like when you lose like you know whatever lost Ingrid Bergman and it's like oh no you know kind of a thing like that and then you like do the whole combat air patrol but one of the cool things is they did have Korea you know when they did Falcon 4 and Falcon Eye of course they also had Korea so it's always kind of wild to fly over Korea where you can like the graphics are like incredible like one of the things I'm impressed with is just how it's a very very mountainous region and I think the tallest mountain in North Korea is something like 9,000 so it's uh, definitely it's quite a bit quite a bit and now the aircraft, I can feel the whole aircraft start to slow down. We're crossing about 30 grand here. I really need about 36,000 to uh, get up to Mach 3 or Mach 1 and a half here. Unfortunately for this particular plane, it's uh, because of the way they modeled it in flight sim, you can't just level off and build up to a Mach 1. It's, you have to do the little dive thing from the Aurora spy plane, which everybody's probably sick of. <laughs> but it's still uh, really, really, really cool. Another thing I find really neat about this plane is if you look at the stick, like that's as far as I can move the stick. It's just, it's... It's just that fast, and the pressure on the controls is that high. You know, I got a little gauge that tells me my hydraulic pressure, and it's like, ooh. Every time you move the stick, the thing's like, are you kidding? Now, what I'm really looking forward to is I was just found out of the news recently that DCS is going to be doing the F-100, which is like, woot. And uh, we might be getting an F-4 for Microsoft Flight Simulator also, which would be absolutely wild. 
Come on, I just need 36,000 feet. Give me the last couple feet. Really tempted to slew to get it. Let's see how we're doing over here. We have 1,200 in the tip, so we got plenty of gas still. Of course, my crew chief is going to be killing me when I get back because he's going to be like, what'd you do to the jet pipe? I'm like, I used it a little bit. <laughs> Let's see, I'm doing 0.9 right now in the mock, and that's, uh, it's, it's enough. Well, like I said, I need to get 36,000 feet. I could probably get away with 35, but it's going to be just a little safer. Man, this thing is so beautiful. You can literally see where the type of uh, metals used in the airplane shift from the aluminum to the magnesium on the high temperature section and the high stress sections. Just a completely different color. I love little details like that. Get just a little tiny bit higher here. Like I said, I'm watching my instruments because this aircraft gets a little weird at this altitude. Not bad, just weird. And that's 36,000. So one of the things I've learned from reading enough uh, flight fighter memoirs is to quickly get energy, you just do a negative maneuver. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna push the nose forward and I'm gonna get as close to a quarter G as I can get here. I don't wanna do zero, like I said, the engine will cut out. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna build ourselves up into a little bit of a dive. And the purpose of this dive is to help get us over the hump out of the transonic range. This should not take much effort. That looks good right there. And now you have to kind of catch it because what will happen is that's the Mach 1 right there. Once you're out of transonic, which is up to about Mach 1.2, it gets really interesting. And the controls get really, 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 really difficult to move. Come on. That's 30,000. We'll start leveling off. About 2G should be plenty. And we're on our way now. We're holding about 1.18. Oh, there it is. It's very, very, very weird. Of course, uh, when I was originally thinking of doing Korea, my, uh, my original thought was an F-86, but unfortunately I could not find an F-86 or MiG-15 for that matter that I liked enough to do it with. So we're going to stick with the F-104 because why not? All right, let's pick up a little bit of speed. The coolest thing is here is uh, popping outside for a second and just looking down and watching how fast the world is just going by right now. You know, you think of those missiles that have the ability to come, reach up and tap an airplane doing these kinds of speeds, but it's, just, it's incredible when you think about it. All right, that looks pretty good. Give myself just a couple whacks of trim. Perfect. Let's see if I can play with the throttle just a little bit here, get just a little bit more out of it. I really, really want to see my favorite error message ever seen in an airplane before. There it goes. Look at it go. All right, F-18s, where are you now? <laughs> Had a feeling. Okay, so one of the neat things about this aircraft is that it was kind of the early days of high-speed flight. So they had a bit of a limit as far as how fast it could safely go before basically the inlet air temperature of the airplane would overheat. So they came up with a very clever way to warn the pilots that this was about to occur. And um, like I said, it's, I find it very, very amusing, but some people might not find it amusing. There it is. <laughs> Shouldn't it say fast? That doesn't make sense to me. I feel like that should say fast. Nice. Also, we're over pointing in, so we're going to go ahead and flip. Oh, did somebody catch up to me? I am super impressed, Mr. F-22. I don't know how you did that. But we're at pointing in, though, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, take us down. That would cause such a flame out. All right, let's head on down. One of the most fascinating things here is um, that's about four Gs right there. Apparently I pulled, pulled eight and a half at one point. I don't know when I did that. I'm blaming that on lag. I've got an F-16 now. Oh man, this is giving me such flashbacks for how many times I played Falcon, like uh, whether it's BMS or Allied Force or something like that. It looks much, much prettier at flights in though. And we're just gonna go down and visit the city here. Are we doing on the G's? Eh, three's fine. Man, this thing's fast. There we go. And pointing in is going to be basically at a 12 o'clock here. Sweet. Time to check on yield combustibles. Let's see, I've completely depleted my pylons and I'm working on the tips. Yee. <laughs> Remember, this is after getting gas when we're on the other coast. I'm just gonna kind of 
so open the sights here. This is a very, very, again, cool city. Good mix of old and new from uh, some of the pictures that I have seen of it. Very, very similar as we'll see with Seoul is that you got basically this large river kind of going through the middle of it and everything else is kind of along or sort of with it. And it's actually really, really wild when we get down there. Uh, I have a feeling there's an F-16 sneaking up on me. Call it a hint. Nope, oh, I got a Tomcat sneaking up on me. Oh, there he is. Was I right or was I right? Called it completely. There's no way they wouldn't be able to follow me into this. All right, let's go take a look at the Korea, North Korean capital here. Gotta like having a nice smooth, soft joy. Oh, got past. Oh, there it is. There it is. That, I think I could turn with Laflarog there, but he's got a little bit more speed than I do right now. All right, let's go ahead and buzz the capital. I'm sure this will cause an international incident in some kind. If you want to see something really, really cool, though, check this out. Look familiar? That's what I always think of when I think of North Korea. I also think of the DMZ, but we'll be there in a few minutes. All these buildings. And then as soon as you got into Poyang, incredibly, it goes right back to the countryside. And I find it interesting just how many people live in that particular region. And then it's like, whoosh, and we're on our way once again. Now, one thing I am going to do, though, is I'm going to edit something you're not supposed to change in the real world. Achoo! There we go. Just wanted to get the sound out of my eyes there. All right. We are on our way back to South Korea. I got an F-18E sneaking up on me here. Give it a little bit. How are we doing on combustibles here? Ugh, not good. If you wonder why I'm calling them combustibles instead of like, you know, jet fuel or something like that, it's uh, the French word for fuel. Uh, once you look at it, you'd be like, ah. Uh, it's really because in DCS, all the uh, French like mirages and stuff like that, they have a sign for combustible as opposed to, you know, fuel or pounds or gas or something like that. This one, of course, good old fashioned American pounds, whatever that is. All right sneak out of these mountains here. I can't tell you how many times in BMS or something like that I basically hid behind these things. This looks so much nicer in a flight sim than it does in BMS. Now one thing that I really really this is like my flight simulators uh, wish list here. I would love for them to take the engine of Microsoft Flight Simulator with the terrain and put in the airplanes from DCS. That's basically my dream. My dream. Oh by the way I'm flying without navigating here. Whoopsies. There we go cool. Now I actually know where I'm going. I was just guessing. <laughs> 150. Nice. Alrighty then. So it should be... Yeah, I think I've messed up my INS system pretty bad. Looks like we got 108 nautical miles to travel there. Which is... Eh, it's going to take us a minute to get there. So I'll go ahead and take advantage of my top speed again. Just a little bit. I just don't want it to flame out on me for like the 50th time. Boom. Going up. Oh man. Those guys in the F-18 are just hunting me down here. USAPR, you've got to be hurting for a fuel right now, especially in an F-16. Monkey chicken in the 18 now? No problem. 18, you could probably just throttle back. You wouldn't even need afterburner to keep up with this thing. All right, that should be pretty good. We'll do a little bit more gentle on the climb here so I don't lose all that energy like I did last time. There we go. Try to keep it about 0.9. Whoop, engine's giving me trouble. Easy. Go. Like when the engine. Whoa! That would be uh, 1950s technology for you. My favorite, though, was uh, the Yumo engine. For those of you who have ever tried to fly like an ME262 in a simulator, wow. You look at the throttle funny and the engine just shuts off and then you're done for the flight kind of a thing. Or it just catches fire. Like that was the other popular thing I like to do, on, at least on me. Maybe I just don't know how to fly it properly. All right, passing into, uh, we're still kind of the southern part of North Korea here. Uh, popping over to South Korea, it is not a very, very long flight here, which is kind of nice, kind of nice. Up to the right, just a tiny bit. I feel like I'm just, I think my INS is just off. Or maybe I didn't uh, enter the codes right when I was copy-pasting. There's a lot of different things here, but it's close. It's not perfect. Also, you got to remember there could be some magnetic deviation issues. Could be a lot of reason for it. All right, it's a pretty good climb rate right there. Across at 20. And we have somebody in an Airbus A320. It'd be a real shame if we went over there and said hello, but I'm not going to. Uh-oh. Hunted down by the Tomcat. Oh, I'm doomed. He's right on my six. Ah, uh, flare. Flare. 
I, I can't beat the Tomcat. I'm sorry. That thing will super cruise. And the F-22? Yeah. I don't even want to get into the F-22. I, I can't compete with that. I just think this thing is really, really cool. This is one of those airplanes where if I could own a fighter jet, this would be one of them. The first one I pick, obviously, would be the F-16, because like if you get a nice D model, you can you at least get, put groceries in the back seat. So I kind of like that. This thing, though, is just pure speed. And unfortunately, in the US, you couldn't fly it supersonic anyway. So it's like, what good is it kind of a thing? go. So what we're going to do is we're going to head into South Korea. Now, South Korea, I know a little bit more about than in North Korea for obvious reasons. I've never been to South Korea. Uh, my most experiences with South Korea, like I said, is from some of the other games. But uh, the interesting thing about Korea is actually uh, their cuisine. Now, uh, one of the things that the uh, wifey had introduced me to a little bit earlier um, last year, actually, is uh, uh, what's wrong with Secretary Kim. It's basically a, uh, I guess you want to call it a sitcom kind of a series about basically these executive manager were living and working in Seoul, and then you know his relationship with the secretary Kim. You know, it's her name. And um, it's, it's a very, very, very cute. It's got a little kidnapping side plot, and it's they have a different way of portraying things than I'm used to in kind of the Western media. And it like they add sound effects to things you wouldn't expect to have sound effects in. But it's a very amusing show if uh, you're looking for something a little bit different to watch. Don't ask me what streaming service it's on because I'm going to completely forget which one it is. But uh, one of the things they did in that show, which blew my mind when I first saw it, everybody said, yeah, look, nicely done, Tomcat. One of the things that I thought was really cool is uh, they did this thing called bar Korean-style barbecue, which is something that I was never familiar with. Uh, for those of you, again, I'm, everybody's concentrating on flying right now. I think I just got cut off here. <laughs> Good job, F-22. Go to the moon. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's not fair. Not fair. Not fair. But um, one of the things that they have is Korean barbecue. So what makes it different than American barbecue is although you do get, like, you know, your kind of sweet and savory flavors and everything like that, what they do differently is they'll actually have it so that there's a grill at your table. Now, again, like for me, you know, being the uh, ignorant American that I am, which... Not proud of that, but I do the best I can. Um, totally no experience. So we try to look around where I live, you know, up in New England, trying to find a spot where we'll actually will do this experience. And we found one in the state that I live in. So uh, we went over to this restaurant and um, they seat you and, you know, they say, what do you want? And they give you this menu and like each meat on the menu is like $30 a piece. So it's like, whoa, okay, but you need at least three to use the grill. So it's like, uh, okay, so you pick out three, again, not knowing what anything is, you just try what you can, kind of a thing like that, which I recommend for everybody. So, you know, you pick up, oh, got cut off. Like I said, I'm still building up altitude. Give me a minute. Almost there, 4,000 to go. But um, what you would do is, you know, you pick out your four meats. I think I have to stop for gas again. Eh, I got 5,000, that's not bad. Not great, not bad, not great, not bad. But um, what you would do is you pick your three meats, and um, what would happen is a SWAT team of uh, servers would show up at your table a little bit after that particular moment. And what they would do once they get to your table is they drop off, I kid you not, 15 or 16 individual side dishes and little bowls. And then what they would do is they'd come by with these giant things of raw meat, and they basically plop them at your table. And they'd say, do you need help cooking? You know, the first time we went there, it was one of those situations where I had no idea what I was doing. It's like, uh, yeah, you could help me with that. So they light up your little grill in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and start my uh, nose over here. Oh, here we go. So they light up your grill. And, uh, you know, they start the whole process of uh, getting your food cooked for you. So, you know, this lady comes by every once in a while, flips it over with some tongs, kind of thing. There's a lot of raw meat and, like, scissors for cutting things. It's, it's absolutely wild. Yes, kimchi was one of the items Toro done. It was, uh, kimchi, by the way, is like a pickled cabbage that, uh, depending on what kind you get, it can taste uh, anywhere between spicy to I'm going to lose my, you know, vocal cords. It's um, absolutely wild, but it's, it's pretty good stuff. But you get the whole SWAT team of different things. There was, like, jellied acorn was an item. Uh, they had... Uh, it was fish gel is the best way to describe it. Like if you try to make jello out of fish is basically what it was. It was uh, interesting. And then they also had things like, you know, your lettuce and your onions, your kimchi, like it was mentioned. They had little tempura veggies and everything along those lines. All really, really wild while you're cooking your meat. So when your meat's done on the grill, you know, you take it, you lift it up with your tongs and you take scissors and you cut it into chunks and you put it on the outside of the grill. Then you change the middle of the grill and then you start the whole process over with the next meat. So you do this, you know, we count me doing this. Of course, they have um, uh, soju, soju, I believe, yes. And that's kind of their, like, national um, spirit, I guess is the best way to say it. They also have some beers and stuff. But it's just, there's a whole, like, procedure to uh, serving that at the table. And it's a very, very interesting and culturally awesome. 
but uh, that was quite an experience. And of course, you know, what did we learn there is um, if you're going to do it with more than one people, you, it's a bit, it's a very social thing. You know, you go out, this is a dinner, like it, it takes time. You're not going to just order what you want, get it and go. It's going to be, you know, a couple hours of sitting there basically grilling as a family or grilling as a group or grilling as a bunch of friends in order to get that. So as soon as the slow light came on, we're actually at the position I needed to be. I'm actually going to nose over and we're going to head down into soul proper here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you probably saw the fact that um, Pyongyang, which is the North Korea capital, was uh, basically a huge city next to river. We are now in Seoul, which is a huge city next to river. Anybody played enough civilization games? <laughs> it kind of comes with the territory. But we're going to go ahead and uh, zing down here. Uh, how are we doing as far as... I've got, I've got 4,000 pounds. That's not bad. All right. Bunk. Goodbye. So we're going to get rid of those two fuel tanks. I don't need those. So I don't, this is the strangest, I can't, I don't recognize this plane without external fuel tanks. It's just strange. So what we're going to do is we're going to fly into Seoul proper here. There's actually a bunch of different parts. Uh, the part to my east, uh, my right here, this would be Inchon. And uh, the part that's going to be kind of to my, uh, no, this side is going to be Seoul proper. Uh, the only thing I know of Seoul from, other than, like I said, uh, you know, some of the TV shows kind of taking place in the area, is um, they used to have a really, really fun kaiju movies uh, back during the 1950s. Anybody who's familiar with the uh, television show Mystery Science Theater 3000 is probably uh, familiar with some of these old Korean shows. I believe um, one of the most recent, like season 13 or 11, I forget which one it is, actually featured one of these. And you get to see a lot of the city. And it's, it's kind of neat because it's like a totally different take on, you know, your typical kaiju sort of film. There's just different themes. And I think that's a really, really interesting because they're all made sort of at the same time. Oh man, flying over Seoul. Now, if you had a single fish in this capital, you'd have a Seoul, Seoul, Seoul. Actually, if it was the heel of the boot of that single fish, you'd have a Seoul, 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 Seoul. <laughs> now, if you had the spirit of it, it would be a Seoul, 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 Seoul. Not that you needed to hear that, but I find that funny. All right. So I think it's interesting here. You got the huge rail yards right there. And you got to imagine people coming into the different parts of the city. So proper should be on my left if my math is right here, which eh, probably is decent. Oh, man, I can feel my frame rate starting to drop. Oh, man, this is so wild. It does remind me of some of the prefectures when you go over to Japan, which I imagine it would because it's near Asia. But it's just, it's just packed. Actually, this reminds me of anything. Italy. You know, just the way you've got all the kind of the red buildings all sort of packed around and just they plop them wherever they can plop them. So the downtown Seoul proper is basically on my left here. Oh, man, that is just so dense. Thank you, Flight Simulator, for being beautiful. You guys do such a nice job at that. That is so wild. And then you kind of have the island where the business district and everything is. All right. Come swing this way. We'll pass over kind of the uh, southern side of town here. Now, the, one of the things I really, really loved about South Korea when I was kind of scouting this all out is they use a lot of tunnels. And again, that kind of reminds me of uh, when I was around the area of Pompeii in Italy, where you'd have basically uh, tunnels to kind of get through these ridiculously large mountains. And then anything that wasn't served with the tunnel was served with the uh, most sketchy road you've ever seen in your life, kind of a thing like that. And it was, like I said, that's so cool. Let's see here. We have a couple Airbus A320s over there in the distance. It does remind me of that, actually. Almost European. Then I'm going to start swinging around here. We're going to head into Suwon, which is uh, one of the airports. Uh, for those of you, again, Falcon fans, you're probably going to remember landing in that one a few times. Um, I don't have someone to marshal me, though. So it's, oh, well, just going to have to kind of do it the old-fashioned way. Hmm. It looks like a very difficult track to run up and down on. Swing this way. Like I said, we're just going to kind of scoot, scoot through the mountains. And that one just kind of cars right through. I'm going to find one of these tunnels. It's going to happen. Yeah, we're just going to put the biggest building in all South Korea. Just right there. That seems like a good spot. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, no, it isn't. Ah, make a liar out of me. Oh, well. Now we're heading into the southern part here. This is a Suwon. This is kind of like, you know, the other, this is the south-south version of Seoul, kind of a thing like that. Very, very, very industrial. And lots and lots and lots and lots of population density here. This is neat. This a lot of this kind of a thing here, which is just, oh, a baseball stadium. Nice. 
love it. So of course, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get ready for our landing as well. So looking down right here, I believe the wind is coming out of the west today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cross over and set up for a left downwind and we're gonna pop this thing down on the ground and call it an afternoon. Suwon has an air base with an A-10 as well. Excellent. Um, I'm kind of disappointed the DCS folks have not done South Korea as uh, one of the terrains yet. I kind of get why they wouldn't, but it's such a cool, I mean, Korea in general, it's just such a neat area. Come swing around this way. We'll see how everybody does. I'm just going to admit right now my landing will not be perfect. Um, I've just, I, I've flown this plane quite a bit in the sim, but I'm trying to get used to the non-X-plane version. The X-plane version like, likes to float a little more. This version is a lot, I don't know, there's just something about the way they model the blown flaps. They're not as linear, I guess is what I want to call it. So I'm just, I'm just kind of saying that in advance here because it's probably going to be a pretty bad landing for this plane. All right, let's swing over this side. Lovely, lovely country. Got a little bit too much altitude here, but that's okay. And I'll take the one on the, let's see over there. We'll use that spot right there as our photograph in case anybody's interested. Oh, I got cut off. Make sure everything came down properly. Now this aircraft, uh, for those of you who do not know it, have this uh, system called blown flaps. What blown flaps are is what they did is they redirect air out of the engine and they force it over the wingtips, as a, not wingtips, the wing itself, in order to try to improve low speed handling. The problem is, is if your RPM on the aircraft drops, it actually causes that system to fail. And when the system fails, it actually fails in a non-linear fashion. It'll actually cause the aircraft to lose lift on one wing. So you essentially will suddenly roll the plane. So I'm going to come around here real, real, real ginger here. I'm watching my little AOA indicator just spike right now. I'm at three units. Ah, I'm way too close. Way too close. That's okay, though. And the AOA, it's going to start. You're going to hear the stick pusher in about half a second here. All right, let's get that last notch of flaps. Send out the boards. Yeah, we're going to aim right over here in the middle. It seems like I'm high, but I'm really not. This aircraft, it literally just falls. It's, it's ridiculous. All right, I got to keep the RPM above. Uh, they say 78 in the book, but 84, I think, is what they did for this. But notice my nose is down. I'm at 85% power, and I'm still doing 180 knots. <laughs> this thing's incredible. So pull the nose up. I'm going to have to go to concentrate mode. Excuse me for a moment. One of the nice tricks about this aircraft, though. Drag shoot. <laughs> Love it. Oh, apparently, we're taking on on the right side, so I'm going to go head over here for those of you who'd like to join us here. We're here. Uh-oh. Nice. We're here. I like how you have to pull it out and twist it, and it breaks the rope, but you're not supposed to break the rope, like, in the middle of the approach here, because then everybody come. Woo. Oh, my gosh. Oh man, what a flight. What a flight. That was excellent. But I have to stop for gas twice. <laughs> it's kind of one of those things. Oh, Lynx OBS. All right, let's kind of sneak over here. Not all the aircraft are going to look proper here, but that's okay. Sort of wish that I waited and got the fighter version and not the TF version. That being said, I've actually flown on VATSIM with this airplane. And uh, one of the fun things about flying with VATSIM with a fighter this fast is it makes the controllers hate you because um, they're going to be like, oh, reduce speed to 210. It's like unable. All right, let's go spin around and get ourselves a nice little picture here. I'm going to kind of do one of these. Come around one more time. Oh, man, this is such a beautiful airplane. Got to play with the lighting, though. Keep in mind, I have no parking brake on this thing, so I have to hold the brakes. Cool. Woo, we're here. What do I got left of combustibles? <gasps> Look at that. Love it. That's why I love fighters. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. Let me uh, go find some photographer's blue here. Nah, let's try it from the other direction and see if that works a little better. Now that it's right in our eyes, that's too bright. Let's see what we got here. Let's do one of these with the long shadows. Oh, I'm going to stick with that one. Let's go ahead and make the sky all puffy. Ooh, that's a little too much. A little too much. Grab that cloud layer. Let's grab this one right here. Make you guys a little bit simpler. 
But uh, I'm glad you can, I mean, I do the same thing in the real world all the time if I don't like the way the clouds look, put them up a little bit higher. Uh, let's make the density, let's make them real dense. Yeah, there we go, beautiful. All right, so I'll just wait until uh, we get a little bit more on the ground, uh, as usual, when we reach the end of this. Uh, if you have any specific questions, comments, uh, things that you'd like to see, like I said, I'm working right now and trying to create basically a series of very, very short videos just to help folks out. You know, I look at the average view length, it's about three and a half minutes, so if I talk for half an hour, sorry about the video on Monday, by the way, um, nobody watches it. So like I said, I'm sort of experimenting a little bit with that. All right, I got my picture. I'm going to check it one more time, just in case. Like I said, I love the F-18. That's a great touch. Oh! Got one more F-18, let's do it. Wait for that, zoom in just a little bit. Nice, great collection everybody, great collection. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get the airplane on nice and airborne here. And we're gonna go find something. Oh, there's a river back there, I think. I'll go ahead for the river. So if you have any questions, comments, anything about this airplane, um, I'm not an expert at Korea. I just thought it'd be kind of a neat place to fly today. So uh, that's why we're here. Oh, USAPR, I guess you and I are using the album. Video about RPN sending. Oh, Lafferog, can you explain what you mean by that? Wee! Try not to rip my flaps off here. There we go, sweet. All right, so let me go find something nice and wet. So Lafferog is asking for a video about RPM settings. Um, I, I can, I'm gonna try to interpret what you mean by that. I assume you would have something to do with Oh, let's see here. Uh, RPM, probably, yeah, just the relationship to power, which ironically, x is going to do an easier job to show that. Oh, can't see. Oh, you know one thing we did not do yet, though? Now, if we are doing Korea here, there's one thing that we haven't done correct here. Uh, let's go ahead and cancel out. We should be seeing this. Humidity lower, temperature colder. There we go. All right, let's go find something nice and wet. That looks pretty good. Actually, we should try to quote, snap the wings off of this thing. Kind of entertaining. All right, that looks pretty good right there. Ooh, I like that one better. I'm trying to stay away from civilians just in case I skip off the water. Ready? So I think it's funny, I have like 450 hours in flight sim. And I have about 200 hours recorded because every time you crash, it doesn't record your hours. <laughs> Ready, set, let's make it a dart. Whee! <laughs> As always, uh, thank you for joining us uh, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, depending on where you're on the world. Uh, hopefully you got found some good stuff. I'll have some things coming out next week about like, philosophical things like you'll see what I mean when we get there and then I'll, we'll do some of those quick videos and our next live stream will probably be two weeks away it might be a little bit longer because uh, my schedule is about to change because it's the end of August early September I think you can guess how my schedule changes and uh, we'll kind of go from there but other than that have a wonderful afternoon and then as always enjoy